This is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is How to Design a Course Using a Connectivist Approach. The title of this video might be somewhat misleading to designers and teachers who think that connectivism is a method that can be applied to particular content. This is why you need to listen to this video and try to see what are the fundamental differences between designing a traditional course and designing a course using a connectivist approach. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What are the strengths and limitations of video game based learning? What are the differences or what is the difference between a pedagogy of retention and a pedagogy of participation? And what are the principles that underlie a connectivist course design? In the recent years, video games have attracted the attention of many researchers in education because of how engaging they are for learners. Many researchers are trying to find out what kind of learning goes on in video games and can this learning be transferred to reality. The trouble with video games is that they are episodic in nature. They must be designed in advance, and no matter how complex or simple the design of, of the video game is, the design remains static. Players must figure out the rules and play by them. This limits the frame of reference. And Stephen Down argues that learning experiences must be designed by taking a wider frame of reference, which is closer to the learner's life experience. Yes, some games allow learners to play socially, chat, and try new experiences, which enlarges the episodic learning events, but the game environment remains closed. Why is it important to have a wide frame of reference, one might ask? Well, because we need to design by keeping in mind a few things. First, knowledge is in constant evolution. When I was a child, there were nine planets in our universe, and that included Pluto. Our country had ten provinces and two territories. And Czechoslovakia was also a country. We had to memorize this information and write the correct answers on our exams and tests. And those who did not do that ended up failing. Today, all this information is inaccurate. The second reason why we must design with a wide frame of reference is that learners are changing constantly. Digital natives, as Prensky calls them, are those who grew up with Internet technologies. They do not think the same way as the previous generations. Children who grew up with text, television and radio did not think the same way as those who grew up with Facebook and YouTube. What Facebook, YouTube, and other platforms did is that they widened the environment in which children learned and created a network around them. They became adults who were thinking with these technologies at the tip of their fingers. What we must do as designers is not to use these technologies in episodic learning experience with our learners, but to create a network that learns, a network that adapts to the learner's input. In this perspective, learners are no longer the recipients of content. They become contributors to the network that the teacher allows them to manage. This allows them to manage their own learning, execute real tasks, solve complex problems and find a direction that is meaningful for them. This work then becomes an adaptive educational system rather than a prescriptive system, like the one illustrated in this figure. This illustrates a decentralized learning system which means that there is no one that has a sole responsibility for delivering the content and many experiences are possible. This being said, how should a course designer or a teacher proceed in order to prepare a course using a connectivist approach? First, let's remember the principles of connective knowledge. The content cannot be static it has to change. The environment will likely change as the learner learns. A fluid network needs to be created in order for the student to learn. Learning needs to be decentralized and learners can contribute to the knowledge and actually they need to. This is challenging 
But the challenge doesn't stop there. We must remember that the Internet has become far more complex than it used to be. This means that learners arrive in the course with either very little background or a thick and rich experience with various types of technologies. Some might have several Facebook pages, blogs, Flickr accounts, YouTube channels, Skype addresses, email addresses, etc. They might be already well connected on LinkedIn. They might contribute to wikis. In a course that is designed with a connectivist approach, a context and a problem might be identified. But the learner would be expected to conduct their own project individually or in groups. And if the projects were done individually, the group would still be involved as the student would gain, gain a lot from the network. Remember that information flows through their networks. In a regular course, students participate to a wiki, to a forum, or maybe they have a blog that they share with other students. The teacher still has the responsibility to deliver the content and the students have the responsibility to assimilate the content. In a connectivist course, these roles are not the same any longer. The teacher manages the learning from a decentralized point of view, acting like a facilitator of knowledge by advising students and someone who creates connections between students and the outside. It would not be abnormal to find in a course environment hundreds of links to websites, wikis and blogs, YouTube videos, and to realize that at the end of the course, students are, now are connected together through various channels that include people outside the class as well. Not one single student would be able to assimilate the course content and the evaluation would not, be, would not be in relation to any of that content. Instead, students would have the responsibility to pick and choose what information is relevant to what they want to do. The course evaluation would be done through carefully selected criteria that would be reflected in the student work submitted at the end of the course, but also through the interactions throughout the course which refers as well to a product and to a product measure. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. How does one design for learning in a network that adapts itself to the learners? Give some examples that we can discuss. What should teachers expect in a connectivist course? What should learners expect in a connectivist course?